is another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. Perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling four seven five three zero zero three eight. Five zero. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850, 24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr., the Apostle, the Teacher, the Prophet, assigned by the Holy Ghost over this work for him. And I'd like to ask you to have your Bibles, your pens, some a pad, uh, you know, with some paper to take notes, because we're going to cover a lot of material, 
and you're really going to want to take notes. You really are. Now, I'm not going to do uh, like most people do, but I will say the Cash App link, if you want to partner with the ministry, uh, is going to be on the screen. And also it's in the description if you're watching by social media. And um, the ministry's phone number is 475-300-3850. We also do a broadcast that's called Community Online Question and Answer Bible Study. So you can call that number and leave some questions that you might want to hear or see tackled on the broadcast. So the Lord will lead me to read the question out and we'll get right into the Bible and get the answer. That's 475-300-3850. And um, let's just get into this. Let's first open up with prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, first of all, asking you to forgive us for all of our sins from the time we were born up to now. Please just forgive us for every one of our sins. There's none of us that do not sin, but we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You said that in Romans chapter 3. You told Paul to write that in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. You said there's none righteous, no, not one. You told him to write that in Romans 3, verse 10. So, Father, again, we come before you just asking you to forgive us, purge us, wash us, Wipe the slate clean so that not only can we come to you, but that we also be able to hear you. Hear what you say. Talk to us. Answer questions. Raise questions. Fill me with the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge to be used by you to teach what thou would have me to say. Minister to me also. In Jesus' name. Forever your word is settled in heaven. And it's not a change. I ask, Lord, that this broadcast encourage the unsaved to give their life to you. I ask that this broadcast encourage those that want to give their life to you to break free of bondage. That they should be able to come to you and taste and see how good you are that they may have a brand new life with you i'm asking that people that drink alcohol that are watching this broadcast that you free them through it through the information people that smoke weed or crack or sniff yale cocaine heroin whatever I ask, Lord, that you purge them as well through the information that you put in this broadcast. Those that want to be delivered from cigarettes that have had a hard time putting them down, I ask, Lord, that you inform them as to what the problem is through this broadcast. Those that are living wayward lives or that have people in their lives that are not saved and hindering them from coming to you. Oh, we ask that you move them out of the way and that you give the person held captive the courage to say, I need a change. Mm -hmm. Let the information that you bless me to share this late night. Feed your people. Those that have to get off early in order to go to sleep so they can go to work in the morning, please let them get something before they part. Please. Those that come on while the broadcast is going on, please let them come in the nick of time to receive what you have for them. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask that you get all the glory, the thanks and the praise. In Jesus' name, bless me to be skillful with the word in handling it. And let your words come out of this mouth and not mine. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I pray. Amen. I'd like to ask you to turn your Bibles. Now, I have a plethora of Bibles around me. So I'm going to be jumping from the King James to the Living Bible and wherever else the Lord lead me to go. But I ask you to grab your Bible, whatever kind you have, and let's start at Genesis chapter 28. We're going to read 22 verses. Now the Lord is going to use me to explain and talk and fellowship. We're going to have a powwow. But scripture must lay the foundation. Uh, the Lord was going to use me on Sunday to do a broadcast, but he said to me that in a lot of ministries with all the false doctrine going around, he didn't want people to be confused on Sunday. So he set apart today, this time, this moment, so that he can have you all to himself without any garbage filling your ears. Instead, nothing but the raw and uncut gospel of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 28, starting at verse 1. I'm trying to hear him. What? Where do I read? I mean, out of the King James or the Living Bible? Okay, I'll read out of the Living Bible so that it will be plainly understood by those that might not understand the King James. We're going to read from the, at this passage. The next passage, we might go elsewhere. We'll see. I got to follow him. Genesis chapter 28, verse 1 out of the living Bible says, so Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him and said to him, don't marry one of these Canaanite girls. Instead, go at once to Padanaram, to the house of your grandfather, Bethuel, and marry one of your cousins your uncle Laban's daughters. God Almighty bless you and give you many children. May you become a great nation of many tribes. May God pass on to you and to your descendants the mighty blessings promised to Abraham. May you own this land where we now are foreigners, for God has given it to Abraham. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padanaram to visit his uncle Laban, his mother's brother the son of Bethuel, the Aramean, or the Aramean. Esau realized that his father despised the local girls and that his father and mother had sent Jacob to Badanaram with his father's blessing to get a wife from there and that they had strictly warned him against marrying a Canaanite girl and that Jacob had agreed and had left for Padanaram. So Esau went to his uncle Ishmael's family and married two additional wives from there, besides the wives he already had. One of these new wives was Mahalath, the sister of Nebaioth, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. That was his son by the Egyptian woman, Hagar. So Jacob left Beersheba and journeyed toward Haran. That night, 
when he stopped the camp at sundown, he found a rock for a headrest or a pillow and lay down to sleep and dreamed that a staircase reached from earth to heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down upon it. And the top of the at the top of the stairs stood the Lord. I am Jehovah, he said, the God of Abraham and of your father Isaac. The ground you are laying on is yours. I will give it to you and to your descendants, for you will have descendants as many as dust. They will cover the land from east to west and from north to south. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you and will protect you wherever you go and will bring you back safely to this land. I will be with you constantly until I have finished giving you all I am promising. Then Jacob woke up. God lives here, he exclaimed in terror. I've stumbled into his home. This is the awesome entrance to heaven. The next morning, he got up very early and set his stone headrest upright as a memorial pillar. So he set his pillow, which was made out of stone, upright as a memorial pillar and poured olive oil over it. He named the place Bethel, house of God. That's what it means. Though the previous name of the nearest village was Luz or Luz, whichever one you pronounce it. It's up to you. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. <laughs> and Jacob vowed this vow to God. If God will help and protect me on this journey and give me food and clothes and will bring me back safely to my father, then I will choose Jehovah as my God. And this memorial pillar shall become a place for worship. And I will give you back a tenth of everything you give me. Now before you run, that didn't mean money. He said a tenth of everything. That's what he said. And in the King James, he said, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Now let's look at Genesis 32. We're going to go into King James for that one. Verses 22 through 32. Now this is about Jacob again. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the fort Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day which in the Hebrew it actually says ascending of the morning. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Which actually in the Hebrew says, That is a prince of God. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask, ask after my name? <laughs> and he blessed him there. 
He blessed him right there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penuel, Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Actually, in the Hebrew, it says the face of God, for he has seen the face of God, and his life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew, which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Now let's go to the book of Daniel. And we're going to notice chapter 10. Now, I, 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 I'll tell you the thought and the title after a while. But again, let's lay some foundation. Some teachers are going to catch on to this pretty soon. The preachers are going to get some sermons. But they won't catch it till we get into the midst, in the midst of it. Daniel chapter 10, we're going to read verses 1 through 14. Now that I'm going to go in the living Bible on for the first 14 verses so that way you understand what's going on here. In the living Bible chapter 10 verse 1, in the third year of the reign of Cyrus, king of Persia, Daniel, also called Belteshazzar, had another vision. It concerned events certain to happen in the future, times of great tribulation wars and sorrows and this time he understood what the vision meant when this vision came to me daniel said later because now he's going to tell what it means and all of that but he said when this vision came to me daniel said later i had been in mourning for three full weeks that means he was fasting I have been in, in mourning for three, four weeks. All that time I tasted neither wine nor meat. And of course I went without desserts. I neither washed <laughs> nor shaved nor combed my hair. Then one day early in April, as I was standing beside the great Tigris River, I looked up and suddenly there before me stood a person robed in linen garments with a belt of purest gold around his waist and glowing, lustrous skin. From his face came blinding flashes like lightning and his eyes were pools of fire. His arms and feet shone like polished brass and his voice was like the roaring of a vast multitude of people. I, Daniel alone saw this great vision the men with me saw nothing, but they were suddenly filled with unreasoning terror and ran to hide, and I was left alone. When I saw this frightening vision, my strength left me, and I grew pale and weak with fright. Then he spoke to me, and I fell to the ground face downward in a deep faint. But a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling, to my hands and knees. And I heard his voice, O oh, Daniel, greatly beloved of God, he said, stand up and listen carefully to what I have to say to you, for God has sent me to you. So I stood up, still trembling with fear. Then he said, don't be frightened, Daniel, for your request has been heard in heaven and was answered the very first day you began to fast. Hold that thought. Before the Lord and pray for understanding. That very day, I was sent here to meet you. But for 21 days, the mighty evil spirit who overrules the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the top officers of the heavenly army, came to help me so that I was able to break through these spitted rulers of Persia. 
Now, I am here to tell you what will happen to your people, the Jews, at the end times. For the fulfillment of this prophecy is many years away. Now let's jump to verse 20. He replied, do you know why I have come? I am here to tell you what is written in the book of the future. <laughs> then, when I leave, I will go again to fight my way back past the prince of Persia and after him the prince of Greece. Only Michael, the angel who guards your people Israel, will be there to help me. Hmm. He said the book of the future. I wonder if you know what that was. It wasn't even written yet. But the angel Gabriel knew about the tribulation. That's, that's what he was going to tell Daniel about. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 5. And I'm going back to the King James Version. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them, from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. Notice that. And they said. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff here underneath on the surface you really can't tell but underneath it's a lot let's jump down to verse 16 of genesis 18 and the men rose up from thence and looked towards sodom and abraham went with them to bring them on the way and the lord said shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do seeing that abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him for i know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he hath spoken of him and the lord said because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now let's go to, oh, wow, I'm supposed to actually pick up here, but I'm going to keep going. And Abraham drew near and said, wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, that means perhaps, there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. 
Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure, which means perhaps, there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure, which means perhaps, there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure, which means, right, perhaps, there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it. I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And I was reading right on that scripture. Oh God, I just saw this bug. Oh, where did he come from? Well, guess what? Oh, he flew. <laughs> okay, every criminal comes back to the scene of the crime. Come back next time I get you. So I was reading right, verse 16 through 33 of Genesis chapter 18. But God said, and we left off in verse 32, where God said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Verse 33 says, And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Now we're going to read go straight on to chapter 19 verses 1 through 29 and there came two angels to Sodom at even that means evening and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground and he said behold now my lords turn in I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. They did a lot of walking and there wasn't cars and buses and all of that. So they did a lot of walking and stepped in dung and different things. So that's why it was important that they washed their feet. That's why. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Let me read verse 2 again. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Now, some people, they get this twisted because they say, Oh, the Bible don't say this or that. Well, let me read it out of the Living Bible. So that is plain for you who are in the dark. So that way you won't be in the dark. You'll hear this. And, you know, I pray that you get something out of it. Uh, that's Genesis 19. And I'm going to jump back uh, to verse 4 out of the Living Bible. Let me go back to verse 3. But he was very urgent until at last they went home with him. And he set a great feast before them, complete with freshly baked unleavened bread. 
after the meal, as they were preparing to retire for the night, the men of the city, yes, sodomites, young and old from all over the city, surrounded the house and shouted to Lot, bring out those men to us so we can rape them. Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. Please, fellows, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Look, I have two virgin daughters. This guy is whack. And I'll surrender them to you to do with as you wish. But leave these men alone, for they are under my protection. Stand back, they yelled. Who do you think you are? We let this fellow settle among us, and now he tries to tell us what to do. We'll deal with you far worse than with those other men. And they lunged at Lot and began breaking down the door. But the two men reached out and pulled Lot in and bolted the door and temporarily blinded the men of Sodom so that they couldn't find the door. What relatives do you have here in the city, the men asked. Get them out of this place, sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone else, for we will destroy the city completely. The stench of the place has reached to heaven, and God has sent us to destroy it. So Lot rushed out to tell his daughter's fiancés, quick, get out of the city, for the Lord is going to destroy it. But the young men looked at him as though he had lost his senses. At dawn the next morning, the angels became urgent. Hurry, they said to Lot. Take your wife and your two daughters who are here and get out while you can, or you will be caught in the destruction of the city. Hmm. When Lot still hesitated, the angel seized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city. The Lord was merciful, for the Lord was merciful. Flee for your lives, the angels told him, and don't look back. Escape to the mountains. Don't stay down here on the plain or you will die. Oh, no, sirs, please, Lot begged. Since you've been so kind to me and saved my life and you've granted me such mercy, let me flee to that little village over there instead of into the mountains, for I fear disaster in the mountains. See, the village is close by, and it is just a small one. Please, please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? And my life will be saved. All right, the angel said. I accept your proposition and won't destroy that little city. But hurry, for I can do nothing until you are there. From that time on, that village was named Zor, meaning little city. The sun was rising as Lot reached the village. Then the Lord rained down fire and flaming tar from heaven upon Sodom and Gomorrah and utterly destroyed them, along with the other cities and villages of the plain, eliminating all life, people, plants, and animals alike. But Lot's wife looked back as she was following along behind him and became a pillar of salt. That morning Abraham was up early and hurried out to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked out across the plain to Sodom and Gomorrah and saw columns of smoke and fumes as from a furnace rising from the cities there. So God heeded Abraham's plea and kept Lot safe, removing him from the maelstrom of death that engulfed the cities. Now we're going to read our last scripture and then we're going to get busy. Second Kings, I'm going to stay in the living Bible, said the Lord. Second Kings chapter 6 and we're going to notice Verses 8 through 18. And I'm also going to end up reading it out of the living Bible. I mean the King James too because for those of us that love the poetry and the style of writing of the King James, we can't 
neglect that. <laughs> and But we're going to read the Living Bible first for those that might not understand the King James. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Second uh, Kings chapter 6. Oh, thank you, Lord. Second Kings chapter 6. First, I'll read it out of the Living Bible. Verses 8 through 18. Mm -mm. This, this is going to be powerful. Once when the king of Syria was at war with Israel, he said to his officers, we will mobilize our forces at, and he named a place, but nobody heard him. Immediately, Elisha warned the king of Israel, don't go near, and he named a place, for the Syrians are planning to mobilize their troops there. The king sent a scout to see if Elisha was right. And sure enough, he had saved him from disaster. This happened several times. The king of Syria was puzzled. He called together his officers and demanded, which of you is the traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel about my plans? It's not us, sir, one of the officers replied. Elisha, the prophet, tells the king of Israel even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Go and find out where he is and we'll send troops to seize him, the king exclaimed. And the report came back, Elisha is at Dawson or Dawson. So one night the king of Syria sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the prophet's servant got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Alas, my master, what shall we do now? He cried out to Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for our army is bigger than theirs. <laughs> then Elisha prayed, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes so that he could see the horses, excuse me, so that he could see horses of fire and chariots of fire everywhere upon the mountain. As the Syrian army advanced upon them, Elisha prayed, Lord, please make them blind. And he did. Hmm. Let me read this out of the King James. I was trying to pause to see if God wanted me to go further. But let me read this out of the King James. Verses 8 through 18. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. In the Hebrew it says, encamping. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Wilt ye not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord. He said, No, my lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send to fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan, or Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, or heavy host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God, or the minister of the man of God, 
was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servants said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. The thought that God gave me for this talk we're getting ready to have is called the secret of how to move the hand of God in prayer. And this is the series. The title is Call on Backup because there's more for us than against us. Let's say our grace. Father, in Jesus' name, again, we come before you, asking you to forgive us for every last one of our sins and shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Lord, get rid of that bug wherever it went, please. This is your sanctuary. Please, unless that bug is trying to learn some word, then he'll need to be in here. I ask, Father, that you be with us, all of us, your people, Minister to us, teach us, talk to us, feed us, answer our questions, minister to us, show us your glory, and show us ourselves. Oh, Lord, many of us have been praying and fasting. We're not doing it for nothing. We're, we're standing and fasting and praying for reasons. Some for one reason, others for another, but some of us for a few things at one time. We're multitasking on our knees. Father, encourage us. Talk to us. Minister to us. We rebuke the devil. We plead the blood of Jesus against him. We bind him in the earth realm. We render him powerless against us and all of our stuff and the people we're praying for. We loose them from his grip. We lay them on the altar before you and ourselves. And we plead the blood of Jesus over us as a covering. We command Satan to go back to the pit of hell from where he came. And we plead the blood of Jesus against him as a shield to hold him back. Every demon that works for him, it don't matter what their name, rank, responsibility, or function is, we cast them out of our life and our affairs and everything that concerneth us and the people we're praying for. And we command those demons to go back to the pit of hell from where they came. And we loose the things we're praying for, the people we're praying for, even ourselves from their grip and we plead the blood of Jesus over us this precious spotless powerful cleansing blood of Jesus over us as a covering and we thank you for hearing us we command those demons to go back to the pit of hell from where they came and not to come back in our lives or situations no more no more. No more. We ask that you dispense heavenly angels from on high to come into the earth realm. The appropriate angels that you know we need. There's some that need an angel to come, an ushering angel, to go and usher them unto you so they can surrender to you. 
There's some that need you to dispense angels with the gift of separation in their wings so they can go and remove unsaved people from around your people. There's some that need you to come and bring peace to their home. So please dispense angels with peace in their wings to go and pour into that household. Some marriages need to be mended. So dispense the angels that will go to mediate, to minister to, and to comfort the husband and wife and to bring them back together, to convince them is pleasing to God that they remain. There's some that you are trying to bless to be married, that the enemy is trying to hinder because they're saying, I'm not worth that. Uh, I know what I went through before. I don't want to go through it again. But Lord, I ask that you dispense a ministering angel to go on to them and to say, it's all right. Because this time, God is with you. Dispense protecting angels to protect the homes of people who are living in a house where there's no peace, nothing but stress, aggravation, bill collectors, and so forth. Your people I'm talking about, not the world, mm -mm. not the unsaved, but your people. Hear their cry in prayer like you said you do. You said your ears are to the prayers of the righteous. But those that ain't trying to live to please you, you don't hear nothing they got to say unless they first say, Lord, forgive me. Dispense recording angels to come into the earth realm, to go where you send them, that they may do like those recording angels did in Genesis 28 when they went to Sodom to record what was going on that they might give you the report and that they might do what you sent them to do if the cry was true and then those that you want to move out the way while you deal with the unsaved, even those that are trying to hinder people from coming to you, even those that are trying to hinder your children, even those that are oppressing your children, Lord, I ask that you move your children out the way and deal with them. Deal with those that are oppressing them. Deal with the unsaved. Deal with those that are mocking you. Throw your weight around. Show that you and you alone are God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for the victory that you are giving unto us. And those of us that are fasting, please let our fast not be in vain. But Father, honor the fast that you bless to go forth every day. Honor the fast. Honor the prayer. Honor the intercession. Because with all that in us is, we stand before you on behalf of those we love and family members fighting for their lives. A lot of them cannot fight because they're not learned in spiritual warfare. But you have taught some of us and made us to be expert swordsmen. The spiritual sword, the word of God. You have made some of us to be strong teachers, teaching nothing but the truth. So help us God. You have blessed some of us to be warriors, able to fight for family members, for our spouses, even the ones that you show us are our spouse, that they have not said yes, Lord, like they should because the devil is trying to rob them. We ask that you dispense angels unto them. Anointed angels that they may look and say 
God loved me so much that he's given me to someone that loves God. Please, Father. Your word says you're not slack as men count slackness. Not according to your promises. Not when it comes to your promises. Not when it comes to your word. You're not slack. As men count slackness. Mm -mm. So we're asking you. Show us. Your glory. Show us your glory. Because if you. If you move on our behalf. Then all the credit. The thanks. The praise. The honor. The oh he's a jolly good fellow. All that goes unto you. For we can't take no credit. I ask that you bless my brethren and sisters that are watching by social media or that are watching by television in their home and they're under this prayer. Bless them. Whatever they pray according to your will, this ministry touches and agrees with them. And now keep me up and strengthen me to be used by you to share this word. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I pray. Amen. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table. I'm glad, I'm glad I know. Someone.
satisfied.